Why is it so ugly? It looks like the contents of my toddler's diapers. Why couldn't I have been born in the arguably superior month of September? These are just some of the lamentations of people born in August any time you bring up their birth known Peridot. But what is Peridot? How does it form? Are there any interesting superstitions surrounding it? And what is it used for today? In today's video, I plan on making this beauty of a gem a little more appealing to even the staunchest Peridot antagonist. But first, a word from this video's sponsor, a me. One of the core tenets of my channel that I'm trying to solidify is to bring you the very best value that I can. But that translates into my business as well, and at the end of the day, they're basically the same thing. This year I started a Mineral of the Month Club, and as it grows, I plan on adding more and more value. My dream with this is to help people create fun starter collections out of unique, fun gems, minerals, and fossils. Some months will be more interesting than others, but if you like shiny baubles, learning about the world we live in, or just want a unique gift for that magpie-brained loved one in your life, this is the subscription service for you. $10 USD a month plus shipping. This is one of the things that allows me to keep giving you all of the fun content that I can, so your support is greatly appreciated. Let's get back to the show. This is my History of Birthstone series, and Peridot is a stone with a rather interesting history that many are quite unaware of. A stone so precious to one ancient people that they hid the location of the island they mined it from and guarded it for centuries. To the point that the island was lost <laughs> and not rediscovered until 1906. This is called foreshadowing. But what is Peridot? Peridot is the gem variety of a mineral called Forsterite, which is in the olivine group. It's a magnesium-rich silicate mineral with a vitreous luster and is a 7 out of 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. Forsterite can actually be green, yellow, or white. However, Peridot itself is associated with the color green. Now the exact origin of the name Peridot is a bit muddled with conflicting information, though it is likely derived from the Arabic word Feridat, which means gem, and that does make me suddenly start to question if it's Peridot, Peridot, although I think the O comes from a French muddling of the word, but that's beside the point, let's keep going. Let's not get distracted today. There is a possibility though that the words Smaragdus and Berillos which are from the Greek, have been used by some sources to describe Peridot in some accounts. So, in short, some descriptions of emeralds and other barrels may have actually been Peridot instead. Knowing this, if it's good enough to be confused with an emerald, then it's good enough for you, August person! I'm just kidding, at the end of the day, it's just purely fascinating to me that maybe four people born in August have ever admitted to me that they actually like their birthstone. So this is just a point of fascination for me. But let me know in the comments, write meow, how do you feel about Peridot, and later, let me know if I've changed your mind. So how does it form? Most Peridot forms under extreme conditions, very deep in the earth and is brought to the surface via volcanic activity. Some, however, came to the earth in a much more spicy way, and how do you get more spicy than volcanic activity? Meteorites? Absolutely meteorites? One of the most widely desired meteorite varieties is called a palisite. Palisites are a complex nickel-iron meteorite that will also heavily feature various forms of olivine, including peridot. And these palisites are fantastic. I cannot stress this enough. Like, just look at the screen. These are awesome. Peridot is a gem with a rich geological and astronomical history. However, it's a story in human history that's also rather fascinating. Ancient Egyptians, because what birthstone video is complete without Egypt, mined Peridot on an island in the Red Sea called Topazios, or Topazios, rather, which is now known as St. John's Island or Zarbagad. The ancient Egyptians prized it so much that the location of the island was a closely guarded secret, and when Egypt's empire declined, the location was lost until St. John's Island was rediscovered in 1906. Some historians speculate that Cleopatra's famous emeralds may have actually been Peridot. Purely speculative, but it does make you think. Legend has it that the island was infested with snakes, and they made mining rather unpleasant, as one does. 
An enterprising pharaoh drove them into the sea. Now, why does that sound so familiar? Now, Peridot has often been confused through history. It's been called Topaz at various times in history, hence the name Topazius for the island. In the Middle Ages, people believed that the 200 carat gems adorning the Shrine of the Three Holy Kings in Cologne Cathedral were emeralds. They were, in fact, Peridot. So what are some of the beliefs surrounding this maligned gemstone? The ancient Egyptians believed that Peridot was a very spiritual stone that specifically protected its wearer from terrors of the night. A belief that has transmigrated into modern beliefs today. Fun fact, the Egyptians called it the Gem of the Sun. They also believed that it embodied the very forces of nature and was used to communicate with their gods, and would drink from goblets made out of Peridot for this exact purpose. Speaking of forces of nature, however, let's turn to Hawaii. Small gem-quality peridot pieces are sold in Hawaii as Pele's Tears, the goddess of fire. Now, Hawaii is home to one of three green sand beaches in the world where olivine, remember, peridot is in the olivine group, has eroded into sand on the beach. Some native Hawaiians still consider the Hawaii diamond, as they call it, as sacred to Pele today. In the 1500s, a German occult writer named Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa said that if you held Peridot up to the sun, there's the sun connection again, a golden star would shine from it to heal any respiratory ailments, unquote. Some medieval apothecaries would actually keep the gemstone in a powdered form to use as an antidote to insomnia, bleeding, madness, and the nightmares, which sound like a night terror to me. Beliefs have a funny way of traveling through time, for sure. But unlike many of the other stones in this History of Birthstone series, Peridot does not have a tremendous amount of industrial applications. It's mostly used as a conditioner in metallurgy, being added to metals to pull impurities into the slag glass and away from the desired metal. It also has some refractory applications as well. Today, the vast majority of Peridot in the world comes from the San Carlos Apache Reservation in Gila County, Arizona. 80 plus percent of it. There are also gem quality deposits in Pakistan and a few other places as well. However, it is quite plentiful on the market today, and if you want a piece of Peridot jewelry, you'll likely be able to find it. But what do you think about Peridot? Is it a cool stone that has been found in literal space rocks? A stone pooled from the deepest portions of our planet and only brought to the surface through violent volcanic events? Or is it still but ugly? Let me know in the comments. Smash the like button, hit the real subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.